Hi guys, this is going to be the tutorial that's going to show you how to make this butterfly shawl. So, quick story, I was making another shawl, I wanted to make a, a, one for my daughter, and uh, I was trying to make her a butterfly style shawl that has four sections, just like mine, and when I started hers, uh, it, I sh when I showed it to my husband, he was like, it looks like a bath bat or a moth and my daughter was like I said it's supposed to be a butterfly and she and my daughter says it's a batterfly so <laughs> that's what I decided to go ahead and name this one here her shawl the batterfly shawl instead of butterfly shawl to make this I used one skein it's a yarn cake from yarn art it's from their flowers um, line and it's a thousand meters and this is what I use to make all of this shawl. It's a smaller shawl because I use some of it to make this flap here. So it's a shorter shawl than it would be, but for her being a, a small, you know, teenager, that she, well, almost a teenager, that that's perfect for her. But you don't have to make the flap. You can just make the shawl part and do it endlessly. It's a easy repeat once you get to uh, row five or something like that. I'll tell you when I get there. So anyway, uh, another tip is if you if you see that maybe your shawls on this side is getting a little bit too wide or small, don't be afraid to add a decrease here somewhere in the middle and just stay with the pattern still. And the hook I used for the, the whole shawl is a four millimeter hook or a size G hook for the US. But for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm gonna be using a five millimeter hook so you can see the stitching uh, a lot better. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and put those with the pictures on my shop so if you want the pattern with pictures then you can find those links down below if not then you can find the you can still find the pattern for free on my site okay when you create your slip knot make sure that you leave a tail before you start so you know go down a little bit tail wise and then grab it and you should do this every time you disconnect and reconnect your yarn always leave a tail that can be worked in later so to begin this shawl, you want to start by chaining three. Then this first chain is going to be where we're going to put all our stitches in. And then the chain two here is going to count as our first stitch. So in this third chain from the hook, you're going to put seven double crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, up oh, seven, sorry. So let's count two, four, six, seven, and then the chain three, I'm sorry, the chain two here counts as the eighth. So you should have a total of eight stitches. Once you do, chain two, and turn and get a little closer okay for row two you're going to double crochet in the same stitch again your chain two is going to count as your first stitch so in that same beginning stitch you will put another double crochet now for the rest of these you want to put two double crochets worked in the same stitch we're going to be doubling our stitches this row don't forget to put two double crochets in that ending chain two. The end of row two, you should have 16 stitches. Okay, I'm coming up to the very ending chain two. So put two in there as well, and then count your stitches. Make sure you have 16. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 15, and then 16 is this chain here on the end. Okay, when you get done with that, you want to chain two and turn. Now for row three, you're going to be putting a V-stitch. This chain 
two here counts as the double crochet in the first stitch. You'll also have a double crochet that ends. So you'll always end and begin with the double crochet or the chain two. So you're going to skip this very first chain where the, I mean the very first stitch where the chain comes out of and in the second chain, I mean second stitch from the hook, you'll put a V stitch. I got chain on the brain. So V stitch which consists of double crochet, chain one, double crochet, all in the same second stitch. Then you'll skip a stitch and in the next stitch you'll put two double crochets, chain one, then two double crochets all worked in the same stitch. That's going to be our little small peak stitch. Now you're going to skip a stitch again and then the next one, so skip a stitch, next one you put a V stitch, which is double crochet, chain one, double crochet, all worked in the same stitch. And then your, let me just see where I am, skip a stitch, V stitch, and then you're going to repeat this uh, again. You're going to be skipping a stitch, then you're going to create your next small peak by doing two double crochets, chain one, two double crochets, all worked in that same stitch. These are our peak stitches. Again, skip the next stitch and then the following stitch you'll put a V stitch. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Then you'll skip a stitch and then the next one will be a small peak stitch again, which is two double crochets, chain one, two double crochets. Then you're going to skip the next stitch and then the following stitch you're going to put a V stitch. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet all worked in the same stitch. And then you want to put a double crochet in your ending, the top of your ending chain two. To end row three. That's what it looks like for row three so far. Okay, for row four you're going to chain two and turn. So the very first stitch of this row we're going to be using our V stitch. So in that V stitch you want to put a V stitch. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet to create your V stitch and your V stitch. Then we're going to create our first peak stitch and our small peak stitch here. So we did two, one, and two. This time we're going to do three double crochets if I can keep my yarn on my hook. Then chain one, and then put three double crochets. Then again you're going to skip and put a v-stitch right into your v-stitch. This is going to be just V stitches and peaks. So we're going to repeat this for the, the rest of the row. Sorry, I have an itch on my shoulder. I don't know if I touched the microphone or not. So anyway, in your small peak stitches, you want to put your full peak stitches in there, which uh, consist of three double crochets, chain one, three double crochets, and then in your peak stitches, I mean in your V stitches you'll work V stitches. I'm running out of yarn so I'll be right back. Okay I just did my V stitch, my very last V stitch here and now I'm coming to my ending chain two and you want to double crochet in that ending chain two and that will end row four. So for row five you're going to chain two and turn. For row five it's super super easy because all you're going to be doing for row five is V stitches. So the very first V stitch of the row you put a V stitch. And then we're going to move over to our peak stitches where we now have three double crochets, chain one, three double crochets and we're going to be working in the center double crochet here. 
and we're going to put a V stitch. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet into that center, double crochet there. Then move into the peak stitch, actual stitch, and you'll put a V stitch in there too. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Which brings us back up to our three stitches on this side. Again, using that middle one, you want to put a V stitch. It's going to be nothing but V stitches this time. And again, work a V stitch in your V stitch. Then again, it brings you back up to your three. Put a V stitch in the center, double crochet. Put a V stitch in the center stitch here. And then again in the middle double crochet here, then V stitch and V stitch. So just continue this all the way till you reach the end of your row. Okay, I just did my last V stitch and then I'm going to put a double crochet worked in the top of my ending chain two. And that ends row five. Now for row six, you're going to chain two and turn. Now you want a V stitch in your first two V stitches. So V stitch there and then V stitch in your next V stitch. Which will bring you up to your peak. This middle one here, the very next one is your peak stitch and now from now on all of your peak stitches will be worked exactly the same. So when you come up to a peak stitch you want to put three double crochets chain one and three double crochets. So from now on all your peak stitches will be worked that exact same way. Three double crochets, chain one, three double crochets. Now we have uh, three peak stitches that we need to do in a row. Not peak stitches, V stitches. We got three V stitches. So we'll do the first one, this is the second one, and then the third. So three V stitches in a row be between your two peak stitches. On the side here though, you still only have two and you'll end with only two V stitches as well. But between your peak stitches, you'll be doing three V stitches. So once you get your three V stitches, you've come back up to your peak stitch. And again, we're going to work those three double crochets, chain one, three double crochets, all worked into that V stitch here on your peak. Then that brings us again to our three V stitches. Again, you'll do three V, you'll put a V stitch in the next three stitches. I'm sorry, the, the next three V stitches. V stitch and a V stitch. Pretty easy. Once you have your three V stitches done, brings you back up to your peak stitch. So we'll do our three double crochets. Chain one. And then three double crochets. Which now brings us to our end here. So we're going to do a V stitch in our V stitch. Then a V stitch in our last V stitch of the row. Leaving us with just our chain two here on the end that you want to put a double crochet in the top of. And that is the end of row six. Okay, for row seven, and this is where we're going to get our three V stitches uh, slowly going on this side. So you're going to chain two and turn. It's always chain two and turn at this point. And you're going to put a V stitch in your first two V stitches. And then using the, the uh, what is it? So it wants me to skip one? Okay. Got to remember what I have written down here. Um, D, DC one of the next two and then skip the last. Okay, so we're going to, these three uh, double crochets are going to be one double crochet, one double crochet, and then skip this last double crochet. So I'm going to put one double crochet here, one double crochet here. 
and next row we're going to be working in between the space to create our, our third v-stitch on this side so skip this third double crochet here and now working in the peak stitch we're going to do our peak stitch like I said for the rest of this shawl it's always going to be the same three double crochets chain one then three double crochets after your peak stitch again you're going to skip the very first double crochet here and then you're going to put one double crochet in the next two so skip the first one and double crochet in the next two then you want to put a v-stitch in your next three v-stitches so this very first v-stitch going to put a v-stitch then we have our second and our third right here so we'll put a v-stitch in this one then a v-stitch in this one then you're going to repeat this for the row again you want to put one double crochet worked in the next two double crochets then we'll skip the third work our peak stitch as usual as normal three double crochets chain one three double crochets then again skip remember this one here will try to hide underneath so make sure you're skipping the right one skip this one double crochet double crochet double crochet double crochet which will bring you back up to your three V stitches and then when you get back up here again you're gonna double crochet double crochet skip the third do your peak stitch and then continue on and I'll see you back here when you get done when you get to the end okay I'm getting to the end of the row I just did my last V stitch and now I'm putting my double crochet in the ending chain two and that will end row seven row nine is the repeat so we got one more row and then I'll show you nine <laughs> it'll just be nine pretty much the rest of the shawl okay for row eight you want to chain two and turn now you want to put a V stitch in the first two V stitches and then we're going to come up to our double two double crochets we made last row and we're going to be working in between them and you're going to put a V stitch there as well that's how we create our three stitches three V stitches on this side then you want to double crochet in your three double crochets so one two and three then you're going to put your peak stitch in here in your peak stitch area by doing three double crochets chain one and three double crochets on this side Now you want to skip this very first double crochet of your three and you're only going to be putting one double crochet in the next two and then you're going to come up to these two here and you're going to put one double crochet in the next one as well and skipping this very last one so you're going to be skipping the very first double crochet then double crochet in your remaining two double crochets of your peak stitch and then one in this double crochet leaving the very last one there to be skipped and you're going to go right into your v-stitch you put a v-stitch in your next three v-stitches then you're going to mirror what you just did here you're going to be skipping this is part of the v-stitch so this doesn't count this is already used okay so we're only talking about the very next double crochet you're going to be skipping this very next double crochet using the next one and putting a double crochet in that one then you're going to double crochet in the next whoops right out of yarn here double crochet in the next two stitches as well 
So again, you're going to skip the very last one on both ends. You're going to have one skipped stitch. And you'll have three double crochets worked in this space area. And with this shawl, these are the only ones that will change. Your V-stitches will always be the same now, but you're always going to be increasing this number by one. So next row, it'll be four double crochets here in a row. But this row, we have three. So let's just stick with that for now. Let me get some yarn. Okay. Now we're going to do our peak stitch exactly the same. Remember, we're skipping that very last double crochet on the end. We're working our main peak stitch here. Three double crochets, chain one, three double crochets. Okay, again, you're going to skip the very first double crochet out of these three, and you're going to be double crocheting the next two and the following double crochet, and then skip that very last one. So skip one, double crochet in the next three double crochets, and then skip this last one. And I'll bring you back up to your three V stitches again. And you know by now what you've got to do with those V stitches. So let's do that. Make quick work of those V stitches. Which brings us up, remember, don't count this V stitch. It's done and over. This is the very next stitch. This is the stitch you skip. Remember, you're doing three double crochets in a row for this uh, round, uh, sorry, row. Then you'll skip the last one right before the peak. Then you'll do your peak stitch. Okay, after you get your peak stitch done, and now we're on the end section, so it's going to be worked a little different. You want to go ahead and put a double crochet. Don't skip one this time on the end for this row. You'll be putting one double crochet worked in each of those three double crochets, and then you're going to be using the space in between the next two double crochets to create your V stitch. And then you'll put a V stitch and the next two V stitches. Leaving you with just your chain two on the end that we will put a double crochet into. And that's what row eight looks like. Now for row nine. And row nine is the ending row. After we do row nine, it'll just be slightly altered every row, and I'll show you. So for row nine, you're going to chain two and turn. From now on here, you're going to be putting one V stitch in your first three V stitches. And then, sorry, I just want to make sure this is a very important row. Okay, so V-stitch in each one of your V-stitches, then you're going to be skipping the first and last double crochet before your peak. That's going to be the way this um, pattern is going to go from now on. You're always going to skip the very last double crochet and the very first, only working in the center ones. And this row, we have four. So we're going to skip this very first one and we're going to put one double crochet in the next four. Then you're going to turn and do your peak stitch as usual. Chain one. Then again, you're going to skip that very first one and double crochet in the next four stitches, skipping the last one here, and then V-stitch in your three V-stitches.
Then again, it brings us back up to this peak area. Again, you're going to skip that very first double crochet and double crochet in your next four. Skip the last double crochet and do your peak stitch as normal. And I'm running out of yarn again. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and continue to do your peak stitch. Skip the very first one again and do your four double crochets, skipping the last one, and then do your three B stitches. And continue this for your row. Okay, for the end of row nine, put a double crochet in your double crochet. And now it's just going to be a repeat of that. Again, you'll chain two, you'll put one, let me get a little closer here. You'll chain two, you'll put one V stitch and your three V stitches on this side. You will always skip the very first double crochet and do a double crochet in one, two, three, four, five this row, skipping this very last double crochet. Then you'll do your peak as usual. Again, skipping the very first double crochet, double crocheting in the next five, skipping the last double crochet, and then doing your three double, uh, your three V stitches as usual. Then again, skipping, doing five, skipping the last. You'll always be skipping the first and the last double crochet. You'll only be double crocheting in the center ones. Then doing your peak stitches the same, and always your three V stitches the same. Now for the flap, what I did is I went ahead and did that repeat until I did 22 rows. So I had, I believe I had a total of 23 rows. Wait, let me move this. I think I was on, just finished row 22. Oh, yeah. So for row 22, after row 22, I went ahead and I cut my yarn. And then I took the, because I was using a yarn cake. So I, I cut my yarn and then added that color to the first few rows of the flap. So what I did, and I'll show you here. Again, every time you cut your yarn, you want to leave a tail. Every time you add new yarn, you want to leave a tail. Because you want to be able to hide. And what I did is... I got a marker to mark this very last stitch. So basically this is the very first side stitch, which is also the last stitch in my row because this is where you, you do your double crochet in the ending chain too. So this is your very last stitch. So you want to make sure that you mark it very clearly for yourself. So you know where it's attached is your very last stitch of the row. Now we're going to be using this side of stitches along the top. They're all double crochets, which means they're two sections. So you want to put two stitches in each one of those. Except for, uh, yeah, 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 even the first. Okay, so you want to do an, a, a double crochet attachment. And how you do that is you yarn over, hold it with your finger, insert it into the stitch you want, which is going to be this first side stitch, then pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And now you have, it's a little wonky there, do a little tighter. Pull through two, then pull through two, there we go. Now you got your first double crochet. Now on that same stitch, you want to put another double crochet. And you want to put a double crochet in each of your side stitches along your row. Now the reason why I stopped and started doing this on row 23 is because that was about the width of the flap that I wanted. So to make it easier for myself, uh, I just, so if you, so what I'm saying is if you think this is too short, I mean obviously this is too short, but after row 23, if you want your flap to be wider because you, you I mean your plan is to make like an extra wide shawl or something like that, 
then feel free to keep doing this pattern until you reach, you know, uh, 30, you know, do 30 rows and then attach your yarn and go all across, whoops, all across the top. You can be working in all across the top stitches. But this is, uh, I have a limited skein because I, I wanted to do this all in one skein and I wanted to have my uh, color changes in my flap as well because I thought it would look awesome. But you can change however you want, but I do recommend stopping and doing it beforehand. Okay, now this little center circle that you have going here. I should move this thing out of the way. Let me get a little closer. Okay, these are your center stitches. This is row three, oh, two. Yeah, this is row two. So for row three here in the middle, I also did two stitches on the double crochets, then two stitches worked in that center and then again two double crochets worked. So that's how you work that center area there. Two here, two center, two on the outside and then you'll just continue putting two double crochets for row three and then continue. Now they're much easier to look once you get to the, the V-stitch area. So continue, put two double crochets in all your side stitches and I'll see you back here in a minute. Okay, I did it all the way up to the end and this is my chain two that I had to get ready for the next row. Don't touch that part. This is the very last stitch of your flap. Then when you get to the end of the row, you want to chain two and turn. And now we're going to do just like we did down below. We're going to be using the stitches in between our um, two double crochets to create a V-stitch. But the V-stitches that are on your hood, you do not want to chain one in between. It's very important to not do that. So when you begin a row, you have, cha you have a chain of two. So go in between the first two stitches, put a double crochet. And that's how you'll always do your first V-stitch. Now we're going to be skipping the next space. And we're going to come in right into the two double crochets that are worked in this stitch here. And we're just going to use that space in between them. And you're going to put two double crochets in that stitch. Again, you want to skip this next stitch. You're just going to be working in the spaces between the two double crochets that are coming out of the stitch. So you're going to be skipping the in-between stitches, just working in those two. The space in between your two double crochets and you're going to put two double crochets. And see the fact that you're working in that space, you're creating a V-stitch without the chain. It will spread those two stitches apart from each other just because you're working in the space in between them. There's no need to chain one. If you chain one, it's going to uh, widen your hood as you go and you don't want it to widen. You want it to stay straight so that it will fall right. So you want to continue to work your two double crochets in the space in between your two double crochets. Now I added color to my flap whenever I had a couple of color changes. It's kind of like it's your own preference. I'll show you in a minute when I get to the end. I just want to go over this part again and show you what it looks like and then I'll explain a little bit on how I decided. I'll, sh I'll bring out the shawl here and explain a little. A lot of racket going on upstairs. I don't know if y'all can hear it. Okay, this is this is my last V stitch. So I'm gonna put my two double crochets worked into this. And that's it. That ends your row. To start your next one, again you're gonna chain two, turn, 
and then double crochet right into that space in between your double crochets and then again you're gonna skip the next stitch and using just the two stitches you're gonna put two double crochets worked in those stitches it's very 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 easy and again you can see it's already starting to that's fine so you're going to continue to do that along the you know putting the two double crochets in between and at the end remember it's just a simple working your two double crochets in the very last space here and then just chain two and turn and then working your first double crochet in that space which will give you your next first V stitch and then continue on So that's it guys. I really hope that you enjoyed this design and the tutorial and you can understand it well and everything. If you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps me out so much. Also, if you always want to be notified whenever I release a new tutorial, you can click that little bell button beside the subscribe button to always be notified whenever I release something new. Also, I have an email blast now that if you always want to be notified whenever I release something new, uh, for that week actually it's just for the whole week so so if you want to know what was new for that week go ahead and you can sign up easily on the link down below to uh, my email blast every week uh, also I have uh, two groups on Facebook one called crochet for the masses which is more of a private uh, crochet group and then crochet zone public which uh, you designer and other designers post there as well you can post things for sale it's pretty much open. It's just crochet. Oh, I also have a Pinterest board where I check it daily and it's only free crochet pattern links and it's uh, also pinned by the, des the designer. So there's always lots of new pins there every day to free crochet pattern. So I suggest you check that out. So that's it guys. Thank you so very much for watching.